what's going on guys and gals? Instructor Joe Munoz here, brought you into the classroom today for our briefing series, right? Our briefing series. So what you're gonna see here today is the B1 cut profile for the 737 NG and 737 Classic. It's essentially the same. You can apply this to, to, uh, to both fleet types, all right? I'm gonna cover a couple things, including the actual profile as well as call outs, and then also we're gonna touch on tips and tricks common weak points, common mistakes that everybody makes. And believe me when I tell you, there are some common mistakes that every single pilot makes. So we're gonna uncover those today and kind of guide you through what you can do to ensure that does not happen to you. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is draw a runway on the board. All right, let's talk a little bit about what it is that you can expect in terms of call outs, the profile. Okay, let's look at the profile first. So you're rolling down the runway. All right, and we're gonna get 80 knots, then we're gonna get V1 rotate, all right? And of course, pilot monitoring is gonna call out this V1 rotate, right? Now, you gotta realize something right off the bat before we continue any further. When the pilot monitoring says V1, right? He or she is not commanding, or rotate rather. When, when they say rotate, he or she is not commanding you to rotate. Rather, they are simply stating or acknowledging, hey, captain, we have reached the speed at which rotation can begin. If you wanna do it, go for it, right? So, with that being said, take your time, okay? Don't fall asleep on the runway, but take your time, because typically, when we're doing V1 cuts, it, assuming uh, it's programmed correctly in the simulator, the engine should fail while you're still on the runway, right? Now, that's gonna make it a lot easier for you as opposed to a V2 cut, because you still have reference, visual reference, to the center line. So all you're gonna be doing is looking outside, you got that center line right in sight, so you just need to apply appropriate rudder pressure to track that runway center line. Right, so here we are, V1, rotate, we're gonna rotate the aircraft off, right? And now we're gonna to get to 400 feet. Okay, and at 400 feet, of course, we're gonna select a roll mode. So it's either gonna be heading select or LNAV. Now, preferably, preferably terrain permitting, we're gonna go heading select, okay? Some airports, of course, depending where you're at, uh, uh, geographically, you may need to do LNAV to follow an engine out procedure for terrain or something like that. But preferably, we're gonna go heading select. So I'm gonna put heading select. Okay, and this is a great time for you to declare your emergency right here. So heading select, okay, and declare emergency. And you're gonna call for heading select, of course. You're not gonna actually push it because you're flying the aircraft, right? Your pilot flying. Pilot monitoring is gonna go ahead and select that heading select, declare an emergency. So the way this should sound is the pilot monitoring is gonna say 400 feet, and you're gonna come back as pilot flying and say, heading select, declare an emergency, request runway heading, minimum vector altitude, right? So you're gonna make your request right here, Okay, for runway heading, ideally, remember, this is terrain permitting, right? Runway heading and then MVA, or the minimum vector altitude. So what's the lowest altitude we can go so we can be uh, 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 get into the procedure, the non-normal procedure, as opposed to focusing on getting the aircraft climbed up, right? So we continue climbing, right? We're gonna get up to 1,000 feet right over here. All right, and by the way, don't be in a rush to do this part, okay? Because you have from 400 feet all the way up to 1,000. So 400 feet to 1,000, you got 600 feet to climb still where you can be taking these actions, okay? So now when you get to 1,000 feet, your, your call out here is gonna be speed 210, okay? Speed 210. Now, if you're flying an NG, you could just say bug up, okay? Bug up, all right, bug up. Now, what's the difference? The bug up on the NG, of course, if you've uh, um, uh, seen the speed tape before on the NG, you'll see that there is a magenta up indication. So you're gonna roll the bug, okay? The pilot monitor is gonna roll the bug all the way until uh, the up speed is encapsulated in that magenta box on the speed tape. Otherwise, classic guys, speed 210, all right? For all you uh, uh, classic drivers out there, speed 210 is gonna work just fine. And invariably, bug up is essentially speed 210. It's really what it amounts to. All right, beautiful. So now we get into our flap retraction schedule, right? So we're gonna go flaps one, and then assuming it was a flap five takeoff, right? And then we're gonna go flaps up. So we go flaps one, and then we're gonna go flaps up. And then once the flaps are all the way up, we're gonna call for level change, set maximum continuous thrust. Level change, set MCT. All right, level change, set MCT. Level change, set MCT. Now, what does that do? Level change gets you out of toga mode. Right, MCT is going to give you, well, max continuous thrust. It's, a, it's essentially a thrust reduction. So when you think about your 1,000 foot call out on two engines, if this was a normal takeoff two engine, no engine failure, okay, right here at 1,000 feet, you're typically calling for one of two things, either VNAV or you could say N1, 
right? Bug up or N1 speed 210, same thing. What does that N1 push button do? Well, it's gonna reduce that thrust to climb thrust. Of course, here, we're single engine, so you don't wanna reduce thrust. You only have one engine and you're gonna need it to climb up to your top altitude, whatever that happens to be, right? So with that being said, 1,000 feet is just speed 210, you're not gonna reduce thrust. Flap retraction schedule, one, and then flaps up, assuming it was a flat five takeoff. And finally, when the flaps are up, level change MCT. Now we're gonna identify the problem, all right? All right, now let's look at this profile from a top-down view, and let's look at rudder control. Okay, this is one of the biggest weak points I see in the simulator. Rudder control, how do you properly control the rudder? Make sure you've got good directional control, all right? And, of course, tips, tricks, and techniques to make sure that you fly this with intolerances. All right, so what we're gonna do here, Okay, I'm going to draw this runway out for you. There it is. Got runway top down view, center lines right here. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to place the aircraft right here on the on the runway. And for this particular example, for this particular scenario, right, we're going to assume that the number one engine has failed. So there we are at V1 engine failure, and of course, inevitably in this condition, right, with this one now producing zero, assuming it's a severe damage. And this, uh, this engine over here is pushing, right? So, of course, you have a left-turning tendency of the nose, invariably, because of this. So, how do you correct? Simple, right rudder. Okay, don't overthink this, okay? And another thing I want to tell you, do not anticipate which engine is going to fail, okay? Something that happens, I see this a lot. We get, especially when we're doing reposition takeoff, reposition takeoff, reposition takeoff, we start to get a little bit antsy and anticipate, oh, the left one's going to fail, the right one's going to fail. And then you start putting in correct rudder. Let it fail. Just let it fail, all right? And then, when you see yourself going off the center line, you're gonna correct anyways, right? So you let yourself kind of, you're gonna see it, you're gonna deviate off slightly, and what your goal is here is not necessarily to get right back on the center line, okay? That's not the aim. The aim is to, okay, slightly get off, and then correct back, right? To parallel. You gotta parallel the center line. You have to parallel the center line. That's the main thing. I'm not trying to get exactly on it, but I do want to parallel it, right? Now, the reason for paralleling the center line, all right, is going to be the following. Your tolerance on takeoff is plus or minus 10 degrees on the heading, okay, heading, right? So, essentially, when you're rolling down the runway here, okay, here's that runway right there. What you're going to do is think of, at the end of the runway, think of it as a goal post, right? Think of this as a, uh, as a goal post down here. And what we're trying to do is rotate that aircraft off and fly it straight through the goal post. You don't want to go too far left, right? Because if you're looking at the goal post head on here, okay? And this is your, let's say this is your aircraft here in the center, okay? What we don't want to do is go too far left or right, of course, because we have the side posts, right, of this, of this goal post. So you want to parallel this center line so that at the end of the runway, you're flying straight, okay, tracking straight, so you can fly straight through this, this, this uh, goal post, so to speak. So keep that in mind, okay? Now, let's talk about rudder control. All right, so I'm gonna put your, your rudder pedals, in fact, I'm gonna do it in a different color marker. All right, so you're gonna put your rudder pedals here, right? And let's, let's talk about pressure on the pedals. All right, so we got left pedal, and we got a right pedal. Now, in this condition, obviously, which rudder do you think you gotta push? The right one, right? If you said right, then you're right. <laughs> I like how that works out, right? All right, so here we are, all right? Power on here, let's say it's about 98% or so, whatever it happens to be, right? And over here, rudder pressure-wise, let's say we need, oh, uh, maybe 10 pounds of rudder, okay? Is that the actual number? Don't know, don't care, really don't, okay? All I wanna do is show you guys that for this given N1 right here, right? That's the rudder pressure you need, okay? So, we're tying two numbers together. Whether they're correct or not is irrelevant at the moment. You'll see why this matters in a second. All right, so here we are, right? 90% 10 pounds of, uh, of, of pressure, and ultimately this should get us tracking straight, right? Keep in mind that as you fly through this goal post, what's your speed, okay? It's going to be about V2, and you're going to be climbing out uh, anywhere in the neighborhood of V2, V2 plus 15, right? So V2, ish, V2 plus 15-ish, that's your climb out until we get to that 1,000 uh, foot mark and then we're gonna uh, roll it to speed 210 or bug up, right? Now, with a V2 plus 15, your speed is gonna be approximately, oh, in the neighborhood of 152, 157, something like that, depending on weight, of course. But the bottom line that you need to realize with this is that it's low, your speed is low. So you're finding the aircraft here, 
in the worst possible condition for an engine now, okay? You basically have an airplane, okay, that has high thrust, 